that Dinesh has, uh, has shared of mine and I've been with IGC for more than like four years now. So I started teaching at IGC um, since my second year of MTech. Now uh, that is 2018. Uh, and then I've been teaching, um, I've taught fluid mechanics, I've taught aerodynamics, I've taught uh, stability. Um, so these are the uh, major areas uh, I've been teaching. So in today's uh, discussion, I'll just quickly go over, um, you know, Euler angles topic uh, from aircraft stability. And this is just to give you guys a flavor of, you know, how, do, how we teach, um, the depth to which we explain, and then our way of problem, uh, solving problems, etc. So this is just a demo of that. And, and, and the format is that you feel free to ask questions. So that's the main thing. Now you guys need to ask questions. Um, so that, that's basically the way we learn. Um, so ask as many questions as possible. Um, and I'll be happy to answer. And in case if I'm not able to answer live, I'll be uh, happy to get back to you. If, uh, if some cases arise like that. So let's begin and let me share my screen. <clears throat> So please tell me when my if my screen is visible or not. Yeah, yes, sir, it is visible. Sir. All right. Okay. So yeah, so we'll uh, quickly uh, discuss a bit on um, um, access systems, the different access systems, and then the Euler angles uh, from a great stability uh, from stability point of view. All right. So uh, let me talk first about different access systems that we have. Um, um, you know, that we use for aircraft. And access system basically means different frame of reference that you're looking at. Uh, so simply put, uh, generally, you know, in our everyday life, we have a frame of reference, right? So imagine you're sitting in your house. So everything you see is basically from a frame of reference of your house, let's say, or uh, based upon your surroundings. Now imagine you're moving, you're moving in a car or something like that. Uh, so in that case, your frame of reference changes. Now it's your car and, and your frame of reference uh, or the place from which you're measuring things, right? Uh, so uh, let's say uh, you are looking at some other car which is going at some speed. So since you're also moving um, and the other car is also moving, um, you would feel different velocities. You would experience, you would, you would uh, experience a difference in velocity over there or that's what basically you would uh, feel uh, if, if you're, let's say, inside the car, but let's say you're standing outside on the road, uh, the velocity of your uh, velocity of the car, you'll exactly know. Let's say there's a car passing by, you'll know what is the exact velocity and you should be able to track that car in that frame of reference. So here is again the same. You could use a uh, different frame of reference for different scenarios. Uh, it's it's uh, all uh, case by case dependent. Uh, so one such access system is what we call as the access system. And uh, here, our frame of reference is Earth itself. Like, let's say, uh, you know, your uh, your your access system is lying somewhere on Earth, and you're measuring everything on that on 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 that basis. So, typically, we say there are two uh, conventional there are two access systems. Even looking from an Earth access, Earth access system, so one is what we call as conventional Earth access. So, in conventional Earth access, how things are is, let's say, this is whatever you see, it's it's basically the uh, is Earth, and then you are somewhere on the surface of Earth. Somewhere on surface of the Earth, take a point like this. So that's basically your origin. So you could place this origin anywhere on the surface of the Earth. Let's say, uh, imagine, let's say now you are, you are talking about aircrafts, right? Uh, so imagine you're flying from um, Bangalore airport, right? So you could place this uh, on, on Bangalore airport. And here, um, the convention is that your X axis will point towards the direction of the north and Y axis will point towards the east and the Z axis will basically point towards the center of the earth or the direction of the gravity vector because as you all know, all know the gravity, gravity vector would be basically uh, acting towards the center of uh, earth. So it forms a right hand coordinate system um, or it forms a um, um, not right hand coordinate system um, or uh, to, to be more precise it forms a coordinate system where each axis is 90 degrees to each other now this is all good uh, you know let's say uh, this is uh, you know um, um, fine now uh, there could be some cases where you don't want to do this right you uh, let's say you are not trying to measure uh, imagine a flight took off from bangalore and you are not really trying to 
calculate its position or you know something like that maybe uh, you know it could be that uh, you you are interested in something else you do not want to really uh, you know do that just uh, give me a second guys my calling bell is ringing so just give me a second to attend that i'm sorry about that All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry for the disturbance. Um, so now let's say we have for for different scenarios, we have a different form or you know different um, definition for Earth axis. I would say, which is called as datum path Earth axis. So let's say imagine your uh, you, you, you have you are sitting inside your flight or you know there is some flight which is moving. Now can we define an axis system with respect to uh, that flight or you know something like that imagine uh, a flight is already on air now with respect to that flight you know would we would you be able to uh, define something um, an axis system so for that we have what we call as a datum uh, path earth axis system so imagine you know you have uh, your flight somewhere uh, on the surface of the earth uh, i'm sorry uh, in the atmosphere not on the surface of the earth in the atmosphere and your x axis would point towards your flight path so whichever the direction your flight is moving um, your uh, 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 your uh, uh, x axis uh, would point in that, and your z axis in this case will again point towards center of the earth, which is your direction of the gravity vector, and your y axis would be oriented in such a way that um, you know it forms a right hand coordinate system, meaning that all the axes would be uh, axes would be right hand um, at and perpendicular to each other. So now. Uh, and, and, and and I'll uh, talk about, uh, you know, just like the example which I gave, I'll talk about and, and there are more uh, access systems coming and I'll talk about why we have all these and, you know, what are the uh, mutually perpendicular. Yes. Um, so and I'll talk about why we have um, these different access system and where does it come in handy, right? So now uh, again, um, let's say uh, imagine. Uh, you know, everywhere you would want to, um, you know, measure something of the aircraft, right? Uh, like, for example, uh, you would want to measure the speed of the aircraft and you know, so on and so forth. So we define something called as the um, ground speed is basically nothing but is what the speed, the, the speed with which the CG of your aircraft is moving with respect to the Earth axis. So imagine you are uh, sitting, uh, let's say, um, let me quickly uh, erase this. Yeah. So now imagine you are using this access system, right? You're sitting on the surface of the earth in some airport, let's say, and now you are trying to measure the speed with which an aircraft is flying. So now you look at the aircraft and then the aircraft CG is moving at some velocity, uh, you know, some, some, some velocity in some particular direction. So that is what we call as the ground speed. So with respect to the ground, what is basically the speed? Now we also have, uh, so your ground speed, may not really give you all the information about the aerodynamics that is happening to your aircraft right because imagine you are uh, let me if i were to draw uh, so let me take some space here so imagine your aircraft is this and it's moving forward with some speed let's say 100 meters per second as an example now this would be your ground speed right this is your ground speed all right now but this ground speed does not really define the aerodynamics uh, because imagine there is wind blowing on my aircraft and this wind is let's say coming in the opposite direction at 10 meters per second right so now what your aircraft uh, will experience is a wind which is hitting it at a total speed of 110 meters per second right or you know by convention you would write something like 100 minus of minus 10 so let's say 100 is in the positive direction and the wind is in the negative direction, and this is how you would write it. That's why 100 plus 10. So now, then your local aerodynamics of your aircraft would be uh, governed by the 110 speed of your wind, right? So for that, we also, uh, you know, 
denote what is called as a relative velocity aircraft with respect to the wind speed. So that will be nothing but your ground speed minus the minus W, which is what we call as the wind speed. And again, all of them you are measuring in terms of a particular axis system that is the Earth axis system. So, uh, so, uh, and then you know this expression is nothing but just the rearrangement of these both. So. What you need to uh, keep in mind here is that just because from ground, if I'm looking at and seeing that the aircraft is flying at some velocity, it doesn't mean that the aerodynamics of the aircraft is governed by that. It will definitely be dependent upon the local um, flow of wind and you know, the local whatever is happening locally to that aircraft. All right, and the, and the coordinate system, the eighth axis coordinate system, they're they are fixed in space and they do not move. They are somewhere, you know, fixed. So some, this is fixed somewhere, you know, in the atmosphere. This is fixed somewhere on the ground so they do not move at all so this is one type of coordinate system any any questions here any questions anyone and next i'll be going towards coordinate systems that actually move with your aircraft uh, which is definitely you know and i'll talk about the purpose uh, you know as i reach there yeah. any questions anyone All right. So now next we need so not always I would be happy with uh, Sir, uh, yeah. 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 Go ahead. Sir in the above example in the above question uh, uh, the wind speed can be in opposite direction also no? or along yeah, with yeah. the aircraft also. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, it could be any way. It could be any way. Let's say, uh, you know, if my aircraft is like this, my aircraft is going this way, and my wind is also blowing in this way, then the relative velocity would be 100 minus 10, right? 90 meters. So then this 90 meters per second is what would affect your local aerodynamics. All right. And it could come, okay, let's so say, then, whichever uh, way. Uh, if yeah. It, yeah. If it is along the aircraft the sign of the wind speed uh, would be changed yeah so let's say if my aircraft is going here 100 meters per second so this is the, so let's say this is this direction is my positive direction right so this would be positive 100 and this would be uh, my positive 10 so my relative velocity would be nothing but 100 uh, mm -hmm. minus 10 that is 90 because relative velocity uh, relative velocity we always denote as Velocity of the body uh, minus, you know, with whatever you're trying to uh, subtract it. So that is, let's say, a velocity of my aircraft uh, and the ground speed of my aircraft uh, minus my wind speed. With I mean, both of them are, should be measured with respect to the same coordinate system. All right. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Actually, you know, we have defined two coordinate systems. Mm -hmm. One is on the surface of the earth, another one is on the aircraft reference system, right, sir? Right, right. Now, this reference system, which is on the uh, aircraft, uh -huh. is with respect to the surface of the earth or else with respect to the center of the earth? Uh, this is not with respect to the surface of the earth. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely with respect to, it need not be with respect to the uh, center of the earth as well, but you know, again, you know, these are just two points, you could easily join them along a line. Uh, so this origin need not lie on the surface, uh, not on, lie on the surface, it could be anywhere in the atmosphere as well. One right. second, can you one second? So, yeah, so this origin, right, for uh, this guy. It, so this origin could be anywhere on the surface as well. So imagine a scenario like this. Let's say you have a, a fighter jet which launched a missile. So now you would want to track the missile with respect to this fighter jet, right? So in that case, your origin is basically in the atmosphere, right? Not on the mm -hmm. surface. It's not lying, lying on Earth, right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically the difference between both. So one would be on the surface. Let's say you take case of an airport. I'm looking at my aircraft from an airport. Now this other one would be, let's say, the case which I just told now, right? Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Yeah. So that basically brings the, the other point that I wanted to make. So uh, these are very case to case dependent, right? So in one case, I would want to uh, track a flight from Bangalore to Delhi. So I would go with the guy which is sitting on the surface because that's enough for me. 
but you know for this guy uh, i would want to track the missile because tracking the missile with respect to the surface might be useful for somebody sitting on the surface but for the pilot on that aircraft it would be more useful to track it based on basis of from where he is right so that's uh, you know the the case to case scenario that i was talking about it might be useful in different scenarios okay sir thank you thank you right thank you how do we differentiate true air speed and ground speed? So true air speed and everything, those are uh, a bit different. So those basically take into consideration, um, you know, the equivalence of dynamic pressure, etc. That's more from a, uh, let's say, uh, the, there are concepts like true air speed, indicated air speed, etc. So the ground speed is basically uh, is, has no relationship uh, um, with, uh, let's say. Uh, your your indicated air speed or true air speed. Imagine that you are not so ground speed. Just just imagine this way. You are not really sitting on the aircraft. You are somewhere. You are sitting somewhere on um, Earth, right? Or maybe I'll take a simpler example. Uh, you are sitting somewhere. Let's say on the side of the road, right? Sitting somewhere on the side of the road. This is you are sitting over here. Now there's a car passing. Let's say the the name of the car is A. So it was at this location at time t equal to zero, and it moved to such and such location at time uh, one second. It maybe it moved, let's say, 30 meters. So now you would immediately tell me that the velocity is 30 meters per second, right? So this is basically the ground speed. So you are, you are not really sitting on the aircraft. You don't really worry about what is locally happening, whether you know. Well, let's say the wind hitting this car might be different at some different velocity, right? You're not really worried about that. You're just seeing that, okay, from one point to one point, it took so much uh, time and the distance between uh, those two points is so much and maybe it moved in a particular direction. So that's how you would measure it. You don't really worry about um, what, what. Uh, so the indicator and true, uh, true air speed are, uh, they're, they're a bit more uh, related to the aerodynamics than ground speed. Any other any other questions? All right. So let me move ahead. So now, um, no. Imagine um, you would want, uh, let's say, so both these access system uh, were basically fixed in space, right? Now that may not be the case always, you know, that you would be interested in. Maybe you would want an access system, maybe the pilot who is sitting inside the aircraft, right? He would want an access system that would move with him uh, for that matter, because he then he would be able to calculate things uh, with respect to him, right? Um, imagine, you know, this, this pilot is continuously moving. He's not really stationary or, you know, he does not really worry about what is happening from a given point of, from a given point. He's just, he's just only worried about at every instant what is happening. So in such case, we have uh, two access system on his body axis and one is wind axis, which are really attached to your aircraft. So this moves with respect to the aircraft. So any motion that you define here is the respect to your moving aircraft. All right. So what I mean here is your body axis system, it has origin of the CG. So this is an aircraft, this is the CG and the X axis basically point towards the nose. Your Y axis will point towards your uh, right side wing or your start starboard wing. And then your Z axis will basically point downwards uh, such that they make a mutually perpendicular axis system. And this axis system moves with uh, respect to your um, aircraft. All right. And the velocity of the aircraft along these axes at any given instant is what we call as the body axis velocities. So this is nothing but uh, we denote it as UVW. So meaning that let's say your aircraft is moving um, at 100 meters per second along the direction of this X axis. So your U would be 100. Imagine an aircraft is moving towards a side in this particular direction that is uh, towards your y-axis, you would call that as some v-velocity, maybe 10 meters per second. And imagine your aircraft is moving up or down, right? So that is basically along the direction of your z-axis. 
So there you would call the aircraft as a W velocity as well. Yeah, like side slip. Yeah. So W, uh, imagine it's moving up or down, it's climbing or whatever. Uh, let's say there's some velocity over there. So you would have these three velocity components in body axis system. So keep in mind, um, X axis is towards the nose, Y axis is towards the right side wing or the starboard wing, and then the Z axis is uh, pointing downwards, such that it makes a uh, mutually perpendicular axis system. All right. And with respect to, um, 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 you know, this the same, um, that is an axis, which is axis system, which is moving with, uh, with the uh, air, uh, you have you also have wind axis system. So wind axis is nothing but uh, imagine you have you you can you take the wind velocity. All right, you take the wind velocity. So imagine uh, let's say let's focus on this figure. That is, uh, your you're looking at the aircraft from the top, and your wind is basically coming and hitting your aircraft in this direction. All right, so it's not really hitting nose on. It's uh, deviated by some angle, which basically what we call a side slip. Um, and now. Uh, what it basically. Uh, so, so, OK, maybe. Not that maybe let me put it in this way. Your aircraft is oriented in this way that it is, you know. Is oriented in this way, but the net velocity of my aircraft is in this direction. So if my aircraft is moving in this particular direction, which uh, which is equal to saying that my wind is hitting my aircraft in the reverse direction, right? So my aircraft is moving in this direction, though it is pointed straight, but it is moving, you know, in this particular direction, uh, which is equivalent to saying that my wind is hitting my aircraft uh, in the opposite sense in the same direction. So this uh, is what we call as, you know, um, uh, side slip, and 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 uh, maybe we will get on the get into that slowly. So imagine this is the case. So from a wind axis point of view, uh, your x-axis of the coordinate system will basically point in the direction of your velocity. So whichever the direction or whichever the direction in which my aircraft is moving or you know, the velocity uh, is 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 basically in. Um, you know, that's basically uh, or, you know, that uh, maybe, uh, you know, better way to put it would be uh, my total resultant um, velocity rate. That is, you uh, consider the motion of your aircraft as well as um, you, co you consider the direction in which your wind is hitting. So you would have like a total velocity, right? Uh, that is velocity of your aircraft minus the wind velocity. So this is the velocity vector that I'm talking about, the resultant velocity. So I think there was a question. Let me just see what the, what the question was. Um, just, uh, so if the wind hits in the opposite direction, there might be change only in velocity, but how will it change its direction? Uh, no, so here, okay, so that's, that's why, uh, you know, what I mentioned was, uh, imagine, Imagine there is here. We are not really trying to change the direction of velocity or anything like that. Imagine, uh, you know, a simple scenario that, you know, which I just pointed out here, right? Your resultant velocity, that is, you know, your relative velocity between your aircraft and your wind. And that's the velocity vector. Uh, you know, that's that, that we're looking at. That's basically the relative uh, velocity that your aircraft is experiencing, um, um, right? So we are only looking at this particular uh, scenario and it could be, let's say, I'm not saying that it, it needs to be inclined all the time. There could be, you know, your relative velocity. Imagine, you know, there is no wind at all. Your aircraft is moving straight. Right, your aircraft is moving straight. Then your wind will also be straight. You know, your aircraft would be moving in this direction and there's no wind velocity or anything like that. So your wind will basically hit, you know, this, in this direction, there's no relative, you know, velocity basically. So your resultant velocity would be in this direction and there would not be what we call a side slip. So here I'm just doing a very general approach. Imagine there is side slip or the resultant velocity uh, has a component towards the right hand side. It's just a scenario, it need not be the case all the time. All right, so now your X axis is pointing towards this resultant velocity direction. All right, and this resultant velocity 
uh, again, uh, you know, your result, result and velocity. Uh, if you again, you're not know, taking a focus back onto um, you know uh, this case. So let's say your result and velocity is in this direction, and then now you would need to um, then you you would let's say um, imagine this is my wind axis system, right? And now um, your y axis again, you know, would be towards your uh, starboard side wing and perpendicular to your uh, aircraft uh, and uh, yeah, perpendicular to your x axis and then correspondingly you would have your wind axis uh, sorry your z axis which is um, perpendicularly which is pointing downwards and perpendicular to both these axis system so that's uh, you know another uh, axis system that we have where your x axis is basically pointing towards uh, my um uh, my velocity of the resultant relative velocity of my um of my aircraft or if i were to draw it in let's say let's let's try and attempt to draw it in 3d um just opening a new page okay okay so let me let me just reopen my So my open board just crashed. Let me just reopen it. Um, right. All right. So let me reshare my screen. All right. So just tell me if my screen is visible, guys. Okay, yeah. So let's let's try and uh, you know draw it out and see. Okay, let's say if this is my um, let me draw my this is my body axis system, all right. My x axis is pointing towards the nose, uh, y axis is pointing towards the starboard uh, wing, and then z axis downwards. Now imagine my um, velocity, my resultant velocity is something like this. My relative velocity, or uh, you know, the result, the relative of uh, aircraft on the wind is pointing somewhat like this. It's in, uh, it's it's not really uh, parallel to any of these axes, axes. And so it's it's uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, lying in this way. So now, how would I draw my y-axis? Would be, I would need both x and y. So this is my x-axis. My x y-axis would be planar. With this uh, x x y, it's a, it's, it's a basically a plane, and then it needs to be towards the starboard side wing, all right. And then my z axis would be pointing downwards, and it should be drawn mutually perpendicular to both these. So this would basically constitute my um, x y and z. So it's it's difficult to uh, draw. Uh, so that's why I'm just uh, explaining it as well. Um, so um, so the idea here is that your x axis would be pointing in the direction of the wind and then your y and z uh, your y axis you would be drawing such that it is uh, x y makes a, a plane and this in this case the plane might might, might be inclined and then uh, and then y axis would uh, be towards your starboard side wing so it may not really coins coincide with uh, your body axis it could be a bit deviated as well uh, not at all a problem and then your z axis would be initially perpendicular to both so that's uh, and then in this case you won't have any velocities along my uh, in my wind axis system uh, you won't have any velocities along my y or z because your velocity is all uh, your x axis is already um, the direction in which your velocity is right your relative velocity of an aircraft is basically along the direction of the x axis so you would have velocity components like v that is a resultant velocity and then along y and z you would have just zero velocities because this is the direction of resultant velocity so that's wind axis guys any questions any questions here before i uh, go ahead any questions hello sir yeah sir so does it mean that uh, like there are two axis system, body axis system and wind axis system. So, okay. uh, like the y, uh, x y plane of the like x y plane of the body axis, mm -hmm. uh, body axis system should be in the plane itself 
of the wind access system or then will be different also it could be it could be uh, different right uh, okay uh, you know the so it's, it's not like uh, sure like it, it could be different or it could be same. Also. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be. That's true. So, imagine you know oh. you have a scenario like your resultant velocity is also you know is head on with my aircraft. My there's no wind basically. Mm. Imagine there's no wind. So your resultant mm. velocity or relative mm. velocity is basically the velocity of your aircraft itself, right? So, uh, okay. you know, yeah. so the, you know you would need to, uh, you know, so and, and then imagine um, your uh, velocity. Your aircraft is only moving ahead it does not have any y or z velocities right so then your uh, x axis of your body and wind will basically coincide the same y axis will coincide the same mm. z axis will coincide the same yes. so okay. all right okay yeah. thank you yeah. Would V and W in wind axis will always be zero yep yep uh, v and w will always be zero because you're already uh, and this is uh, when you're talking about the velocity of your aircraft right so velocity of your aircraft uh, when uh, you know in the wind axis, it'll, V and W will be zero. But if you're trying to measure the velocity of something else with respect to this, uh, it might be there. So x-axis is already the resultant velocity uh, direction. So you cannot really have components in the other two, right? Uh, for the aircraft. But if you're keeping this as the reference and trying to measure for something else, then that that, that U and W V will all change. It might have some value. All right. Clear? Okay. Any other questions, anyone? All right. So moving ahead, you know, there are like a couple of uh, uh, angles that I, which I wanted to discuss. One is angle of attack. So angle of attack uh, that is nothing but um, would be just the uh, tan inverse of your let's say with respect to your body axis system, it would be nothing but the um, angle between your resultant velocity projection and your X axis. Uh, what I mean by the res resultant velocity projection, if I could go back to this, let me redraw this case again. My This is my body axis, imagine, all right? This is my body axis. So I have my X, Y, and Z. Let me draw my velocity vector here. It's in some orientation. So now what I need to do is to, so it's lying somewhere in this quadrant. It's not really lying on X plane or X Z plane or Y Z plane or X Y plane for that matter. So what first what I would do is that, so the angle between my resultant velocity vector or my relative velocity vector is what I call as my, uh, so uh, angle between my, um uh, relative velocity and then the x-axis uh, is basically what i call as my side slip angle uh, which i mentioned which i uh, represent as beta so first what i would try to do is to basically imagine i want to find the component so if v is my total velocity now how would i find my velocity components along x y and z so i would need to resolve uh, this velocity v along these three axes right so for that, what I do is that I take the projection of V on my XZ plane. So this is my X, XZ plane. I basically project this guy onto the XZ plane and I might receive some, I might get something like this. Right? So I rotated this guy uh, with an angle beta. So if I go back, so this is your velocity vector V and this is your side slip angle. So I'm just taking the projection of this guy onto my x axis uh, x uh, x plane x z plane actually because uh, you know it is having an inclination the other way as well that is towards the z axis as well so i project my velocity vector onto my uh, x z plane that is the this plane right so this component would be nothing but v into let's say cos beta whatever and now if i take this projection so imagine this is the projection that i was talking about this is the projection now the angle between this projection to my x-axis is what i call as my angle of attack with respect to x-axis so that will be nothing but so imagine you have a um, um uh, so if i were to 
resolve uh, this velocity projection, uh, I would have one component along the X axis, which would be my U, right? And then I would have one component along my Z axis, which would be my W, right? So then my angle alpha or my angle of attack would be nothing but just the tan inverse of W. So let's see if this is alpha, my tan alpha would be nothing but W by U, right? Because uh, U and W are the uh, velocities along my X and Z respectively. So then alpha would be tan inverse W by U. And similarly, uh, uh, that, that's how I would define my angle of attack. And then my side slip angle, as I mentioned, is the angle between my velocity vector and then my XZ plane. So I uh, basically, um, uh, uh, um, um, so as I represented over here, we would need to rotate this uh, by so much angle, and then we would find the uh, angle, uh, we would find the projection in the XZ plane. So uh, similarly, if you were to, uh, you know, uh, so if I were to take the projection of V onto my Y axis, uh, so that is nothing but small V would be nothing but your velocity vector times sine beta, right? So um, if I were to project it in this way, I would basically get my velocity V and we'll, we'll, we'll don't worry about these relationships now. I will, we'll, uh, as I talk about Euler angles, uh, we'll come, we'll, we'll get to know more about them. Uh, so just don't worry about these relationships as of now. Uh, so I'm just explaining the angles over here. Uh, and similarly, you know, the side slip angle basically can be given by beta equal to sine inverse of my uh, Z direction, uh, Y direction velocity divided by the total magnitude of my uh, velocity. So this is some of the uh, jargons, uh, you know, that you guys need to understand. And, and, and this is how, uh, let's say for a body axis, you have UVW velocity and for wind axis, you just have the velocity itself. You won't have any components for that matter. All right. And when, uh, don't worry, uh, in the later section, we'll be talking about this relationship more in detail. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll come to that. Any, any, and, and then I, what I forgot to mention was why do we need so many axis systems, right? So as I mentioned in the first case, imagine I wanted to measure something with respect to imagine someone sitting on the airport, want to track the aircraft flying from Bangalore to Delhi. He could do that with, let's say my conventional earth axis system. Then I give the other example of the fighter aircraft, uh, sending out a missile and then trying to see where that missile is. It could use basically this. And then there could be cases, you know, the, the the cases where the pilot sitting on the aircraft would need to measure something based upon the instantaneous location of the uh, aircraft, right? So imagine, um, let's say, uh, the, the pilot is, uh, you know, very much interested uh, in, imagine there is uh, maybe another aircraft, you know, which is uh, coming uh, towards, uh, towards this aircraft. So now imagine at time t equal to one second with respect to this coordinate system, let's say body axis coordinate system, this guy was at a distance of 10 meters. Now, as both of them approaching together, uh, approaching each other, now this distance will keep narrowing down, right? So now then there would be a collision when, uh, you know, both of them are on the same trajectory. So for such scenarios, the pilot would be really interested in knowing with respect to my local coordinate, uh, what is the position of something else or there could be maybe something is happening inside the aircraft right um, what is the what is the location or the, what is what is happening to that i would like to track and similarly um, um, and and uh, imagine you uh, you are doing some kind of uh, imagine let's say you have you have kept some measuring equipments on your aircraft right uh, so all these measuring equipments would be oriented along some direction along these axes um, so that it will pick up those signals um, along these axes and then you'll be able to find out quantities of interest like for example uh, you might uh, keep some um, missionaries or you, know, you could keep some equipments that would calculate the force uh, that is hitting on in a particular direction or the net force acting on my aircraft so then you would orient your gauges or something like that you know in these directions because that is what you have as a reference from an aircraft point of view right because from your aircraft sitting on your aircraft you only have most of your aircraft, you you know what is the uh, starboard side wing, and then you know exactly downwards. So that's basically your reference over there, and then you would uh, align your equipments in that particular direction, and then you would take the measurements, right? So it becomes handy in such scenarios. Or you know there could be cases uh, like let's say imagine you're doing a wind tunnel test. 
in such scenario more than the orientation of your aircraft you would uh, know the direction of the wind right because you know in which which direction uh, the wind is going to come inside inside the wind tunnel uh, so uh, you would uh, basically uh, imagine you want to test at different um, uh, orientation of your aircraft uh, but as a reference you would always keep your machinery let's uh, in the direction of the wing wind and then get the measurement from that and then resolve based upon whatever uh, position you have kept for your aircraft and could change let's say zero degrees 10 degrees 20 degrees you could keep changing your angle of attack but the machinery you may not be able to change all the time the orientation so for that uh, you know in such scenarios you would measure your quantities of interest from a wind axis system and then you know translate it to other axis systems so what i so in summary what i want to mention here is that it, it's all purely based upon convenience um that i would choose one over the other it's there's no hard and fast rule that i need to choose uh, always choose one maybe you know in one scenario uh, where body access would be a preferred choice you might go for wind access and absolutely fine but just need to make sure that uh, when you're communicating these values uh, you need to make sure that uh, imagine i measured something in body axis and didn't measured in the wind axis so make sure that uh, you communicate to me that this has been measured in the wind axis as such that you know if i want to use it i could easily convert it to body axis and then use it for my purpose so it could be used it could be uh, used interchangeably but the idea is to be consistent all right any questions here guys Any questions, anyone? All right. So let me uh, you see, is there any other question in the chat? All right. So going ahead, now imagine you have all these coordinate systems. Now, how would you uh, how would you uh, basically convert my quantities of interest from one access system to the other? Imagine I measured something in my body access system, but you want the data in wind access, or somebody is sitting. Uh, you know, I would be uh, imagine um, uh, somebody is sitting at the airport, and then they're trying to track the flight in which I'm the pilot of. Imagine. Now they don't know. Uh, they don't have. They have very little idea about what the velocity is, right, of my aircraft. So I am in com constant communication with them, saying that my velocity is so and so, um, right. But that is with respect to me. That is with respect to the body axis system. So how would they convert it to their, let's say, Earth axis system and then use it? So Laplace. Uh, so here. Um, um, uh, so uh, so here we we call it as Euler um, angles, um, um, and Euler angles are basically a means of converting from one coordinate system to the other, and we'll see how we do that. And and before entering that, you know, just a small side topic that some notation, uh, you know, that we use in the axis system. So let's say we have the imagine we are looking at the body axis system, uh, right? So uh, we would. Uh, uh, we would um, the the velocity along my x axis is denoted u, my velocity along y direction is denoted v, velocity along my z direction is denoted w. So that is one. And then there could be uh, you know other notations like angular velocities. That is the velocity with which my aircraft is rolling, pitching, or yawing. So any rotation along my um, x axis is what what I call as roll. Any rotation along my y axis is what I call as pitch, and any rotation along my z axis is what I call as yaw. So, uh, and we have notations for that. So the angular velocity along x direction or your rolling rate is what we call it as. It's, it's denoted as p. Uh, your pitching rate is denoted as q, and your yawing rate, so yaw, basically the rotation along my z axis is denoted as r. And then we also have what we call as the attitude of the aircraft. Attitude is basically the angular orientation of your aircraft along each uh, axis. So there we have uh, notations like phi. Imagine you my aircraft is rotated at some angle, and that angle is what I call as phi. These are orientation based angle. And then what is, let's say, some pitch up, uh, my aircraft is pitched up by some angle. So that's what I call as theta um, or uh, my pitch angle. And then psi, uh, imagine my aircraft is yawed towards left or right. 
for that matter. So this is what I call as my yaw angle or um, you know, psi uh, for that matter. So these are some of the notations and we'll be uh, coming across these notations more and more as we go on. And with that, let me just, uh, since I know we are uh, a bit late, uh, but let me, uh, you know, uh, talk about Euler angles. So yeah, any questions? Sir, uh, is that uh, attitude or altitude? Is, is that attitude or? Altitude? Uh, is that altitude? It's yeah. attitude. So there are two things. There's called altitude of the aircraft, which means, you know, at what height it's flying. And there are things called attitude yeah. of the aircraft as well. So attitude basically means the angular orientation of your aircraft. Okay, so okay. Okay, okay. that's why I asked. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. So okay. altitude is, 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 is different. Yeah. All right. So now, um, so Euler angle is basically a means of transforming vectors from one coordinate to the other. And vectors, uh, by uh, what I uh, mean here is, uh, let's say you have your velocity vector, right, in, in the body axis system. So that's basically u v w. You would want to convert this vector, uh, or you would want to convert your uh, rates, your rotation rates, p q r, uh, you know, so and so. Uh, whatever and we will come to that don't worry uh, so you would want to convert so 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 the imagine a scenario um, something like this all right imagine this is your earth axis system right so you have x axis y axis and z axis now you know i have an aircraft which is uh, flying at some height for that matter and then the line joining my origin to my cg of aircraft is what i call as rc and my aircraft itself will have some axis system, right? The body axis system. It has its x axis, it has its y axis, it has its z axis. Now, the guy sitting on Earth, he wants to track my aircraft. He wants to know where about. I imagine my Earth is flat, okay? Uh, assume that uh, we are not really considering the curvature effects of the Earth. Just assume that Earth is flat, like a football field, it's really flat. Now, this guy wants to know. At every point of time where my aircraft is. All right, he wants to locate my aircraft. Now he doesn't have any access to mid. Yeah, any question? All right, so he doesn't have any way to measure the velocity of my aircraft. I need to communicate it to him. But what velocity do I know? I know only with respect to my axis, right? How much I'm moving in my x direction, how much I'm moving in my z direction, how much I'm moving in my y direction. So now I would communicate, you know, I'm moving 100 meters in next direction, 10 in Y, 10 in Z. Now, if you were to use the same numbers exactly, you know, where he calculated would be, you know, yes. uh, toward Australia. Yes. Like what is it? Yeah. Hello? Any, any questions? Uh, I was not able to hear uh, the voice was very low. Any, any questions? Okay, okay. Yeah, if, if in case you have difficulties, uh, uh, the connection issues, please feel free to put it in chat. Um, all right. So yeah, so now if I, if, if the guy sitting on earth were you, or, you know, sitting who's trying to track my aircraft, uh, if, you was, if you were to use the same values, you know, verbatim, what happens is that he would estimate I have reached Australia, but maybe I would have reached, uh, you know, let's say um, Europe or uh, USA. So it can lead to a huge lot of confusion. So now what this guy needs to do is he needs to convert my velocities to his reference, right? He needs to convert it to how much I'm moving along according to his X, Y and Z. And then he, he can track my aircraft, right? Because you know that DX by DT equal to velocity, right? So now uh, my X direction velocity dy by dt would be my y direction velocity and dz by dt would be my uh, z direction velocity so now you know if i if he knows my velocity at every point of time he can basically extrapolate at different extrapolate to at what time where i am uh, located so now euler angles are a way to do it now the idea here is that you would want to make sure that imagine you are trying to so here your let me draw it separately 
X, Y, Z. This is your Earth axis system. Imagine your body axis system is, uh, you know, somewhere like this, right? Now, what Euler angles tell you is that how should I rotate my Earth axis system such that I can coincide with this axis system? So the idea here is: imagine if this is my body axis system. Let's say this is my body axis system. I want my Earth axis system also to even so body axis system will be on the aircraft both axis system will be here but i want my i want the direction of orientation of my axis to remain the same so wherever my body axis system x axis is pointing to the same direction my earth axis x axis should point to and similarly for y and z so how should i rotate my aircraft or how should i rotate my um, earth axis system uh, such that it coincides with my body axis system that's basically where or the entire Euler angles concept comes in all right. Any questions? All right. Okay. Guess my PC is crashing again. So let me reshare my screen. So I know we are running late a bit. Uh, let me. I'll, I'll try to wrap it up uh, so that. Yes, have sufficient time. Let me reshare my screen. All right. Okay. So yeah. So what Euler angles basically does is to get your Earth axis and body axis to coincide with each other. All right. So now, um, so here you have your Earth axis, right? And now you would want to rotate it, you know, by some angle and then get it coincident with, let's say, uh, sorry, where is my, yeah, right. Uh, let me just try to spot my uh, x1, y1, or z1. So now, uh, so ultimately you would want to, uh, so this is basically your earth axis. This is your earth axis, which is basically the, the same direction which I have just drawn here. Now you would want to rotate this earth axis by some way or the other and then finally get it coincident with my body axis. So my body axis is eventually uh, something like this. Yeah, something like this. So now, the way to rotate this is standard, uh, you know, notation or standard um, way of transformation that we use. That is first, let's say. Uh, so this is your. Uh, yeah. So this is your uh, Z axis, Y axis, um, X axis. So first thing is what you do is you rotate your Z axis. By an angle psi. So here, you're, so you're starting from Earth axis and trying to go into body axis. So you're you're rotating your Earth axis. All right. So you take the Z axis and then you rotate it by some angle psi. So when you rotate it by some angle psi, your X axis moves something like this. Your Y axis moves something like this, right? By some angle psi. All right. And then it should, so the direction of rotation would be according to your right hand thumb rule. So you point your uh, thumb along the direction of Z axis. And then your uh, well, uh, curling fingers will give you the direction in which you need to rotate. So it will be in this way. So your x axis and y axis gets rotated by some angle psi. So next, what you do is that you go to your y axis. That's your newly rotated y axis, which is this, all right? And then you rotate it by an angle theta. And this basically changes the orientation of your uh, z and x, all right? So if I were to show you guys in the figure, so when when I rotated, so x1, z1, y1 is from where we started. So now when I rotated along psi, it became x2, y2, and uh, your z axis basically remained the same because that's the axis along which you are rotating. Now the second rotation is along my newly formed y axis. That is this newly oriented by x and I'm rotating it by an angle theta and again the direction of rotation should be based upon your right hand thumb rule so it will be this so with that rotation my z axis moved here 
let us it move to this and my x axis move to something like this um and my um and my um, y axis remain the same all right and then the last rotation is by some angle phi you have to rotate your newly formed x axis so when you do that your z axis comes here your uh, y axis let's say it goes here and then your x axis basically remains the same so now eventually uh, you need to find out what is this phi theta psi how much should i rotate my each axis such that i would get my earth axis to be that of my body axis system so this phi theta psi are what we call as my um, euler angles um, or orientation angles and if i were to move my axis uh, by by following these rotations i can uh, basically get it coincident with my body axis system so that's basically the idea behind our euler angles and uh, and then just to cap it off we have some limits that we place on the angle so your psi that is your uh, z axis rotation angle can either um, have, can have a limit of minus pi to pi or can have a limit 0 to 2 pi so the overall it can uh, rotate around 2 pi so it could be from you could either take it from minus pi to plus pi or 0 to 2 pi and your theta that is your this uh, rotation along y axis it could uh, vary from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 it doesn't move all the way from 0 to 2 pi it has limits from 0 to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and angle phi that is your rotation along x axis again has a limit of minus pi to plus pi or 0 to 2 pi and the reason why we have such limits is that uh, if you don't play such limits and let it rotate at any given interval between any two given interval then you could uh, have ambiguous results uh, meaning that you could uh, you might rotate these uh, by so and so amount but you may not um, you know reach basically the desired orientation so and then these limits uh, so these that's what so these limits are coming from such consideration that to reduce uh, you know uh, and, and then so they have a mathematical base so when you apply these uh, transformation to a vector and then you try to see uh, if you don't place these limits you could see that the vector may not really uh, you know get it may not really uh, transform appropriately you might get ambiguous results you might have uh, you might imagine your earth axis may not point towards my body axis at the end it might you know it might satisfy all these rotations but then you know eventually that it, it might lead to a different solution for that matter so need not worry about that too much um, uh, uh, so that's it's just, just need to keep in mind that um, these these limits do come so as to create uh, such that we are having unique solutions for our transformations and, and the, there's, there's some math behind that which uh, we are not going to get into at the moment um, so yeah and then here you can notice one thing is that my theta varies from minus pi to plus pi so eventually it's only able to traverse a total angle of 180 degree so that's uh, you know that's nothing but if you are familiar with spherical um, uh, geometry right so there you have components like r theta and uh, phi so here uh, only one of these angles move um, um, let's say uh, the, 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 for full 360 degrees other will move 180 and that's purely because rotation is sufficient for us to cover all the possible combinations or all possible locations it doesn't need to um, you know cover so imagine a scenario like this right so this is my spherical coordinate system and then you know uh, imagine uh, there is some r and phi so this is my r uh, so you have some theta and phi, uh, you know, um, uh, respectively. Um, let's say uh, theta and phi. So you could basically have, or maybe more easier to draw with that. Let's say you have a sphere, and then imagine you are trying to um, cover the the entire uh, portion here, right? So you could have a line which is covering from minus which is starting from minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 and then let it rotate 
along for 360 you would be able to cover you know all the uh, points you should be able to cover all the locations so that's why we have a limit of uh, minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 um, because it does not need to cover the entire 360 degree angle um, without that you would be able to uh, scan every single uh, location or you would be able to uh, represent every location in that coordinate system so that's about what Euler angle is any questions here guys Any questions? Sir, there is a terminology called azimuth and elevation. Right. But there is uh, no such names for phi. Is there any name for that also? Uh, so, uh, as we go along, you will see that. Uh, so, azimuth and elevation usually comes from the spherical geometry, as I mentioned, right? Uh, so, here, as we go along, uh, you know, when I show you next, you will see that these angles right phi theta psi will take up uh, you know um, angles values of angle of attack side slip angle etc so uh, so here you know you have these azimuth elevation and then phi basically we don't have any name for that but more important and and and, and this uh, you know as i mentioned it comes from spherical geometry because in spherical geometry we have r the uh, and then two angles too measure the space and this phi is not really you know part of it so we do not really have any name for that and that is one thing and it does not really uh, matter over here because unlike our spherical geometry quantities like azimuth and elevation these guys will basically take on values that are relevant from an aerodynamics point of view like uh, in some case scenarios you would have your your psi will become your side slip angle in some theta will become your angle of attack so, and your phi, you know, might be zero, might have some orientation angle, etc. So, uh, or what we call as the roll angle, for that matter. So, it does not really uh, matter, uh, you know, if, if if we are giving a notation for it, because ultimately we are tying them to some relevant aerodynamic quantities. So, yeah, we, we wouldn't have you could you could you could maybe you know in case so not always the more often than not your phi becomes your roll angle more often than not. So, you know, it does not, you wouldn't have to worry too much about the lack of a name for it. Because as such, uh, calling it azimuth elevation may not really have a lot of sense for aerodynamics or, you know, from a stability point of view. But when you connect them to the aerodynamics or aerodynamic quantities of interest, then, you know, it gives us some useful solution. All right. Any other question? Yeah. Okay, uh, so let me um, move ahead in the interest of time. So uh, now, you know, when you do all these transformations, right? Uh, when you transform, um, you rotate uh, along the z-axis and then uh, you, so let me just go to the next page. So, sorry. sorry. Uh, so imagine you, you know, you are uh, looking at your axis system, right? X, Y, Z. Imagine you rotated uh, your axis system along the Z axis. So, you know, X is somewhere over here. Your Y is somewhere over here. So, this you rotated by some angle psi right so now what we will try to do here is express uh, your let's say these are uh, hello am i audible everyone yes sir yes sir yes, yeah. all right all right yeah okay so uh, let's say my x became x1 y became y1 so now what we are trying to do is that we are trying to express x1 in terms of x um and um, uh, y uh, and you would express y1 in terms of x and y so in this case let's say x1 is nothing but x into uh, cos psi uh, minus y sine psi etc so uh, you so so now you would uh, you do it for y1 and then what you're what you're trying to do here is express um you know the one the the express after doing all these rotations, you would want to express 
uh, one axis in terms of the uh, one before rotation after rotation uh, you get let's say when i rotate along z axis you get two new uh, two new x and y axis so now you would want to express your quantities of interest so let's say if i had my velocity as 10 meters per second along my x axis and 20 along my y axis now in my new coordinate system that is x1 and y1 what these velocities would be so you would basically take 10 into cos psi minus 20 into sine psi and you would get it along the new x1 axis and similarly you would find what is the velocity along my y1 axis so you do all these transformations or you you know you find how the newly formed axis is related to my old axis from where i did the rotation and got my new axis and like that if you do you would end up with the matrix like this which you call as the uh, directional cosine matrix directional cosine matrix and again the uh, derivation again you know uh, uh, right now I'm, I'm not really going to discuss about that since this is a demo session um, so here imagine you uh, you look at the uh, notation it's nothing but lbe so this is basically basically telling us that this is the matrix that is used for converting my earth axis system to body axis system meaning whatever quantities of interest i have along earth axis system i need to convert it to body axis system imagine i have velocities along earth axis system i want to convert it to body axis system so this is the matrix i will use and you have quantities like cos theta cos psi cos theta sine psi sine theta and you have all these three quantities like phi theta psi going and coming everywhere and till now they are basically the Euler angles they are the angles by which you need to rotate your axis to get it coincident right you want to go from earth to body so this is the uh, angle in which you have to rotate the earth axis to reach body axis and and we'll we'll, we'll come to you know we'll, when we do a problem you guys will uh, get an idea of uh, how do i define these angles so this is an you know very important um, matrix and uh, and there's some math of math behind it uh, let's see if in a detailed session when we are talking about we we'll definitely do that um, but yeah so this is a, um, a matrix and then it's the inverse of this matrix can be used to go from body uh, go from um, body axis to earth axis so that's the notation leb so you are going to earth axis from body axis system so this is the just the inverse of this matrix so basically the idea is you know you convert the velocity from one frame to the other you are going to convert velocity from body axis to earth axis um, you use this matrix and if you want to convert from earth axis to body axis you use this and when we'll uh, see some problems uh, related to that so this is our uh, uh, basically the entire dictionary for conversion these two matrices any questions anyone all right okay so now similarly as i mentioned those uh, matrices matrices can be used to convert velocities from one axis system to the other and now if you want to convert your angular velocities um, for that matter so now you want to imagine the pqr which i mentioned right that is the roll rate pitch rate and your rate you want to so now a pilot which is who's sitting inside the aircraft uh, would be or um, would be saying that I'm rolling at some so and so rate, uh, pitching at some rate, yawing at some rate. Now, someone sitting on the ground, they would want to calculate by how much uh, that those. Uh, so, so, someone who's sitting on the ground would be looking at it differently, right? Because he's sitting in a stationary frame of reference and then he's seeing it. Um, so, the rates for uh, the person who is sitting on the ground would definitely be different. So this is basically a conversion of these angular velocities to what we call as rate of uh, these Euler angles or uh, um, rate at which these uh, orientation angles are changing. So imagine um, I'm sitting on the ground um, and then so these are our, uh, the Euler angle rates that is phi dot basically means rate at which your, um, your phi angle is changing with time. Uh, theta dot basically means rate at which theta is changing with time psi dot psi with time so if i want to convert between my pqr that is the body axis rates to let's say any other axis system rates in this case let's say earth axis um, rates the rate at which these angles are changing 
with respect to my other act coordinate system i could use uh, these matrices so if i want to convert if i know the rate at which um, uh, let's say if someone who's sitting on the ground is telling me that who let's say i'm, I'm pilot uh, is he saying me that you know your aircraft uh, let's say um, according to the person who's sitting on the ground your aircraft is uh, changing the orientation by so and so its roll angle changes so much its pitch angle changes so much its yaw angle changes so much now the pilot needs to calculate uh, you know how much his aircraft is rolling yawing and pitching so you could use this relation so pqr is related to phi dot theta dot psi dot as this matrix and similarly if the pilot is going to tell the guy on the ground saying that i'm rolling uh, pitching and yawing by so much now based upon your point of reference how much is the angles changing you tell me so he can you know calculate based upon this um, matrix relation all right so again you know don't worry about the math behind all these for the time being uh, just um, just just uh, try to take it as a given um, and then when we get into more detailed gate, gate sessions we could definitely see from where these are coming all right and let me um, you know just do some problems quickly uh, just so that we get closure on this um, yeah and so now let's try to apply, uh, you know, this directional cosine matrix, right? And so here, you know, I have my body axis system. This is my body axis system. I have my velocities along my body axis system as U, E, V, E, W, E. And they have also given me my resultant velocity. That's basically my uh, relative velocity or the total velocity with my, uh, with my, with which my aircraft is coming, right? So I need to, so let's say if my wind axis system, so the uh, axis system where you take the X axis to be that of velocity vector direction or relative velocity vector direction is your wind axis system, right? So for wind axis system, let's say my uh, X axis is O X O O Y O O Z O just, just some notating, just some notation for my X axis. So my X axis would be in this way my y axis would be something like this and my z axis would be something like this so that forms a right hand coordinate system and um, and uh, and so though they are not represented the uh, wind axis uh, co ax the axis for, you know as such just imagine that it's there and so my velocity along my x direction would be v naught and as i mentioned right uh, my velocity along my y and z would be zero now the idea here is that if somebody gives you my wind axis velocity vectors or you know if it's something like this you know you, your resultant velocity so and so now how would you convert it to my body axis velocities how would i find out with what velocity my aircraft is moving along in the x direction y direction and then the z direction so my velocity vectors along my uh, body axis is nothing but ue ve and we and here uh, you know going back here you can consider so eventually you can you can you know basically make use of this axis system this relation because you want to go to body axis system and imagine you know in this case you are just uh, assuming that my wind axis and my earth axis are going to be coincident so here nowhere we made any assumptions that uh, there's a particular location in which this axis system earth axis so though i took an example of earth axis system you could easily extend it to any other axis system any uh, axis system other than the body axis system uh, so nowhere i mentioned that it needs to be stationary on ground or anything like that it could be any axis system which is different from my body axis system and i could apply this relationship so in this case assuming assuming that my earth axis i'm just going to substitute with wind axis system right uh, so since I have in the in the derivation, I have not made any assumptions that uh, the axis system which I'm which which I'm rotating to eventually bring it up to body axis is you know sitting on the ground. It's not moving or anything like that. No assumptions have been made, so I can easily uh, you know um, consider that I am starting from my wind axis system uh, instead of that, and then eventually want to reach my body axis system. All right. So now what, uh, so you, you need to find out uh, these quantities, right? Phi, theta, psi. Now what are these phi, theta, psi? So psi is basically the uh, um, the angle with which you need to rotate it uh, so that it gets coincident with um, the, the angle with which you have to rotate your uh, y-axis, I'm sorry, your um, z-axis, right? So imagine you have your 
z axis for the wind axis somewhere over here this is my x axis and some y axis somewhere over here so now psi is basically the angle of this you need to rotate your z axis so to make to basically get the uh, so the angle that my uh, this x axis and of the wind axis is making with res respect to the uh, you know, x axis or making respect to the exit plane is basically my side slip angle or which I call it as beta. So the psi angle with which I need to rotate my z axis over here is will basically be beta or in this case minus beta because uh, you know, I need to go in the anti clockwise sense, but the uh, positive direction of rotation would be by right hand thumb rule would be clockwise. Uh, but to make my x not uh, coincident with x, I need to rotate it by um, in the anti-clockwise sense. So, and that too by an angle beta, which is my side slip angle, which is given in the question. So, I would take it as minus beta. And then once I uh, and then once I get my x-axis projected onto the exit plane, I still need to uh, you know rotate my y axis by an angle alpha upwards. So I got the projection of my y axis, which is nothing but this angle. And then I still need to, you know, rotate this guy or rotate my y axis upwards by some angle alpha such that my both these x, both these axes get coincident. And if you look at the right sense of uh, rotation, it was uh, clockwise. So my theta, the angle which I have to rotate my y axis is is basically nothing but alpha e in this case because they have already mentioned denoted what is that alpha what is that angle you know in terms of the notation for us and and hence hence with which i'll get my x axis both coincident and i do not really need to i have already my uh, you know after the rotations my y axis gets coincident uh, there's no other you know o orientation angle of my x axis mentioned in the question so i can basically take this as zero i do not really have to rotate I rotated my Z, uh, I rotated my Y, and then um, um, so with both these rotations, I was able to, uh, by angles uh, uh, beta E and alpha E, I was able to get it coincident with the body axis. Now I don't need to make any more rotations, so I don't need to, uh, they're already coincident now. Now, now these becomes our Euler angles in this scenario. And now these, if I substitute in this matrix, it eventually turns out to be something like this. So my U E V E W E, which is my body axis velocities is related to my wind axis velocity V not zero and zero as this expression. And um, my velocity along my X direction becomes V not cos alpha E beta E. My velocity along my Y axis becomes V not sine beta E and W velocity that is velocity along my Z axis becomes V not sine alpha E cos beta E. So this is basically a neat expression for our um, for our how, how for let's say if they give you your resultant velocity and then if they have mentioned this is my angle of attack and this is my side slip angle. So these are the relationships to find out what is my body axis velocities. And and this uh, this usually uh, you know comes in a lot of gate. They complete can always repeat this uh, such kind of questions. This is a very important topic. So yeah, so this is basically a straightforward application of your Euler angle. I mean, one could directly looking at the geometry could you know make these uh, drawings right. You know, um, you could uh, take the projection of this guy onto here and then then project it back to X, and arrive at the same same things. It's uh, you know possible that way as well. But then you know in more complicated scenarios, your Euler angles will basically give you a, a systematic way of doing things. So that's you know. Uh, one demonstration of the use of Euler angles. Yeah. Any any questions here? Because I know I went through a bit a bit fast because of our time constraint. So any questions quickly? Any 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 anybody any questions? All right. So and similarly, you know, um, we're talking about this. Uh, exercise that we did right so in 2009 you know a straightforward question was asked from this the velocity vector of an aircraft along its body axis is given by uvw 
if v is the magnitude of velocity alpha is the angle of attack beta is the angle of side slip which of the following set of relationship is correct so if alpha and beta are angle of attack and side slip angle respectively and v is my velocity magnitude so can you find me the components of velocity u v w along my um, my body axis system so which is basically what we derived here right v cos alpha cos beta v sin beta v sin alpha cos beta so that would be nothing but uh, option c v cos beta cos alpha um, v sin beta and v sin beta sin alpha yeah i'm sorry i think it's uh, sorry option d sorry about that option d option d so just a straightforward question that was asked from this and then you could you could also have questions something like this so in 2016 what they asked is the aircraft velocity components in body axis system so that is u v w are nothing but 100 10 and 10 so your body axis velocities the air velocity the angle of attack and side slip so they are asking asking you the reverse now you need to find what is your velocity vector what is your alpha and beta it's very simple your velocity vector would be the resultant of all these right it's just that you have resolved your velocity vector your v naught into three components so if you would take the resultant of it that is nothing but 100 square plus 10 square plus 10 square you would basically get the resultant velocity and that is something around uh, 100.995 all right meters per second and now to find your alpha and beta so for beta we have the straightforward relationship right v equal to v naught into sine beta so your y directional velocity that is 10 is equal to your resultant velocity which we just found now as 100.995 into sine beta so your beta will be uh, sine inverse of 10 by uh, 100.995 and this is basically the same relationship which i showed in the initial slide right and this turns out to be some angle around 5.71 degrees so here keep in mind guys this you would get it in radians you would need to multiply it by pi by 180 uh, i'm sorry 180 by pi to convert it to radians 180 by pi multiply it and then you would get it in radians and similarly they are asking you for uh, angle of attack um, your angle of attack can be easily found now so you know you are you can take any of these right cos alpha cos beta so your u velocity is nothing but your resultant velocity 100.995 into cos alpha which is new to find and cos beta which we just got in the previous step right that's 5.68 degrees or something not 7 one it's around 6 8 degrees so you have 100.995 into cos alpha into cos of 5.68 degrees and this uh, so the only quantity to find is alpha so you can just take the inverse of it and your answer would turn out to be around 5.71 so just a straightforward application of this formula again all right and you could also, uh, you know, another question on similar lines. An aircraft is flying with the inertial ground and wind speed of, so we talked about ground and wind speed, right? So the ground speed of my aircraft is 100, 5, and 5, and my wind speed is 0, minus 5, minus 10, as expressed in body frame. So both of them are being uh, measured in the same frame of reference, but they are, one is the ground speed, one is the wind speed. They're asking us what is the corresponding side slip angle so we need to find what is the resultant velocity right so this one is ground speed one is the uh, wind speed so the resultant velocity or the relative velocity would be nothing but ground speed minus my wind speed right so that would be nothing but 100 minus 0 5 minus of minus 5 5 minus of minus 5 and 5 minus of minus 10 so you would have 100, you would have 10, and you would have 15. And this is in body axis. So this is nothing but your U, V, and W. So just taking the difference between both. So 100, 5, 5 means that each in each component. This is in X direction, this is in Y, this is in Z. So you just uh, subtract the, or I, I add, add or subtract the components um, respectively. 
and then to get your side slip which we just did in the previous question same way so your resultant velocity now would be 100 square plus 10 square plus 15 square and we know that my v is nothing but v naught into sine beta your v in this case is nothing but 10 right your v naught is whatever you're finding it over here and then sine beta so beta is the only unknown over here and then in this case if you were to calculate your beta will turn out to be around 5.65 degrees again all these calculations will yield you in radians it's your duty to multiply it with uh, pi 180 by pi and make it into degrees all right so these are some simple questions you know that can be asked out of it very simple not too much complicated so yeah so this is basically uh, you know what i just wanted to demo with you guys about how will be i know we didn't get enough time so some of the explanations might be a bit vague at this point of time uh, but yeah during the classes we would definitely have a lot of time for q a and then a lot of time for uh, discussion um yeah so yeah again um uh, true you you need to visualize a bit for all these you would need to you know visualize some of these uh, uh angular representation so again you know during um you know our classes uh, uh we, we could have uh, let's say in the more detailed session we could have you know i could have shown you some of the pictures and you know some of the animations to do that so don't worry about that uh, yeah but this is you know what i just quickly wanted to you know talk to you guys about and uh yeah any 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 questions uh you know at this point of time so this is where i stop any any questions guys any questions any concerns that you guys want to bring up at this point of time any questions guys do we like need to go through the whole transform uh to understand the concept or uh like the uh, overall view would be an observe uh, from a gate point of view, this these two matrices are more than fine. You don't really need to figure a find out or understand uh, how these uh, uh, rotations are uh, going through. I mean, you can have an overall view, like you know, this is what is happening. You need not go to the math, math in detail. But again, you know, if you go through the math and if you understand it, you, the, the concept becomes very clear. Even if that is the question, you will still be able to answer. But yeah, till now, from a gate point of view, the questions are very straightforward, like I just showed you right now. Um, nothing much twisted has come, but yeah, we will we'll never know, right? All right. Any other questions or concerns, guys? Any questions, anyone? Okay, so I know it is late and you guys would be urging, I mean, you guys would be, you guys, uh, it's late for all of you guys. I totally understand that. So yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I hope to see some of you in our regular classes. Um, and yeah, uh, my only advice would be to stay focused. If you, something is not clear, ask as simple as that if it's not clear again ask again so it's, it's not that one you know some of these let's say the concept which uh, i just mentioned now it could it's not that it could be understood within one session right maybe you you'll go back and think and say that okay i'm not able to visualize that sir. so could you help me so that's the way you know learning happens that's, that's the way we have, that's why we have discussion forums right so make use of that don't uh, be under the impression that let's say if you if you just simply attend the class you know you're going to understand the concept it never happens that way you need to listen to the class that will give you an initial idea initial direction to think through and it's your duty to go back think about it maybe read a couple of books and we will always suggest you know good books read about it and then you have to come up with your own way of thinking about it so whatever i just mentioned is my way of understanding or my way of thinking you, you might have a much easier way you might have a different way of thinking about it so try to figure that out for every topic and that will definitely help you out you know in a big way that's what's my personal experience all right so yeah well, i hope to see many of you in the regular classes so, and thank you again um, you know um, it was a pleasure good night guys <laughs>